Po' Boy Special here. We've got a really good video for you. We're at Scotty's Gunworks and we are going to show you how to replace the muzzle brake. This is a pistol version of the AR-15 and we're going to replace it with this one. So we're going to take this one off and put this one on and show you exactly how to do it and what goes on. Here's Scotty. First of all, I want to ask you before we start, are there any special tools or anything that you would need first prior before this deinstallation and reinstallation? Well, mainly what you'll need is you'll need a good barrel vise, uh, like this right here. It's just a hydraulic uh, barrel vise is what it is. You'll need some good bushings in there because you don't want to crush your gas tubes. Uh, in this particular case right here, because that's you know a pistol version, it's got a shorter barrel on it, so I'll demonstrate how we're going to do that. We'll set those uh, brass shims up in there after we get it all taken apart here. And uh, I'll just show you how it hooks up in there, and then we'll break the muzzle brake loose and uh, install the new one. All right. Allen wrench. It's usually got, in the, oh, I'm sorry, in one of these right here, we've got a um, lock screw, Allen head lock screw right there, which holds the uh, forearm on there. And you just break that loose, and they're usually not real tight. And right there, and then, well, in this case right here, I guess we better remove the scope. Always want to make sure you know you ain't got anything that's going to uh, stay in the way of the scope right here. Uh, the way it saddles on top of that Picatinny rail right there, you wouldn't have unscrewed it. So we'll remove that. So it won't let it twist off. Right, exactly. So, so make sure everything's clear. Yeah, you just off want to make rail. sure everything's good and clear, exactly. Uh, it appears everything is. <laughs> and they're not really all that tight. In this particular model right here, that's why this one works, because they've got all different versions. Um, it just unscrews like so. That's a lot of unscrewing. Yeah, it's got some real fine threads in it. And then what you would do... very ever so easily put it in your barrel vise. Now this right here is going to kind of close up kind of tight and you've got a gas tube right here so you don't want to crush that gas tube right there so that's why you want to have some uh, there's a gas tube right there. Yes sir. Then you want to make sure you got some more brass uh, bushings that fit in there and that'll take up the slack. And sometimes they can be uh, a job to get off And kind of look at it as you torque it down. Everything's good and clear. Looking at both ends of it. And basically what you need is a good wrench, you know. And you just want to kind of snug it on there really tight to where you ain't got to worry about uh, it slipping on you. And then just... <sighs> that right there wasn't too bad. Just unscrew it, and there it is. And we'll take this right here off. This right here really goes with this particular muzzle brake right here. Uh, and you may even have to use it, so don't throw it away. Save it. And what I mean by that, save that little little ring right there. Now the way this right here works is you just unscrew the little adapter. Make sure your threads are clear and clean. And the way this thing works, you've got some little Allen head uh, lock screws that torque down on there. So what I'm going to do is, I can see some of them are protruding. And it usually comes with a little Allen wrench, which this particular one here did. You don't want to try to screw it on there without uh, relieving them Allen screws. In other words, backing them out a little bit. Because it will definitely mess your threads up. And these are in the side of it. Yes, sir. You got four of them in this particular model right here. All right, we're all clear. 
the wood is taken. And if those are not I'm just taken checking. care of, they will not let you screw it on exactly. like that. Or it'll run your thread if you do. Right. And what I'm doing is I'm just doing some tests on there. You know, you want to be able to kind of freehand it on there. I just want to make sure you don't start the ball rolling off by cross-threading it. And just have you another little wrench on hand. Just keep an eye on everything as you're, you know, threading it up on there. And you just want to snug it up on there really good. About how much pressure would you say you're putting on that? Oh, I'd say probably about 100 pounds. You know, to put the barrel on there, you need about 80 pounds of torque, you know, for an AR-15. You ain't got to have a whole lot on there because you got those lock screws. Um, before I lock them down, I just want to look at something. everything you know kind of freehandedly screws up on there real nice and um, we ain't got no problems with it no burrs no obstructions no exactly now I always like to make my bolts see how them bolt slots are cut in that and you'll never see it or anything uh, what I may do is take that off and we'll stick that little bushing on there and we'll see what where that comes up on it and that way we can sure be sure that all this stuff is nice and straight not that it really matters because it ain't gonna really be seen and we may not even do that but i'm just curious to see what all right all right now all we got to do now is uh put this on there and it's relatively easy uh, the reason why I brought it over here to this little vise right here is because if we'd installed this over there on the other vise, we wouldn't have been able to get it out of the vise. But uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been able to back out right, through, exactly. through the hole. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we got it set up right here, and just basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take and just snug it up on there. Basically, what it all boils down to, you know. And a lot of people, you know, they some people are particular. Some people like for these little things right here to be straight up and down because of the forearm and everything. Uh, the customer said that it didn't it didn't really matter because it's all going to be hidden anyway but you just basically want to just snug it down and uh and, and what we're talking about is when you put the rail assembly back on right it, 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 it you're not even going to see right here anyway exactly as a matter of fact let me see it we'll just demonstrate and you just want to let me point this out too because this is aluminum these right here you want to make sure you definitely start them off on the right foot and don't put a lot of pressure on it because aluminum was real easy to strip and booger the threads. Yeah, that's what this little lock nut right here is. What we do is we just take and uh, get it positioned where we want it. You just basically lock that lock, lock nut in. You know, you can uh, really adjust it on how far in you want to go with that, with that lock nut. And you're talking about this right here. Yes, sir. This uh -huh. part right here is the lock nut. Right. And what I'll do is I'll take and put it about right there. And we'll just uh, lock it down and reassemble it. And it should be good to go. And what kind of tool would you need to lock this back down? Uh, it's a little, what they call a spinner wrench. And I'll have to hunt mine down. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what you do. You just want to kind of get lined up where you want it. It don't take much to uh, tighten that up.
All right, so what we've done here is we've tightened this right here. Right, it's a spinner wrench you use that to tighten with, and you've got a little set screw right here. Uh, you ain't got to really put a lot of torque on them, just snug them down. Basically, it's a jam nut, I guess, if you want to call it a little lock nut. But what it does, it jams up against the back of the uh, of the forearm, uh, and then you've got another little lock uh, screw, which goes right here, which is uh, tightened up with a nylon wrench. All right, and this is what it looks like attached to the end here, and we've it. got the the whole rail back on, and we're just reassembling the whole thing and getting ready to put it back together. And that's pretty much it. It ain't very much to it, you know. Um, basically, what this right here is, you got a little uh, little C clamp clip, I guess if you will. And you just lift a little clip up there, and then that little unit unscrews. And I guess we can demonstrate that if you want to, right quick, Steve. All right. Um, let's see here. Best I can remember. Let me get over here right quick and get one of these uh, little miniaturized screwdrivers. Something like that. All this stuff here out of the way. basically just want to get in there and lift this little spinner or this little uh, e-clip up. Probably have to go with something just a little bit smaller. Let's see what I here. I had a little punch or something. Just anything. I don't know if that's going to be. Yeah, that works. And basically, what you do is you just unclip it there if you can see that. Make sure it don't get away from you. And then that unscrews like so. And what this does, this hides the muzzle flash. Then you can unscrew it and clean it. Um, this right here looks like it's going to want to be stubborn. There we go. There it goes. Oh, oh yeah. You can see the residue that's already in there, and we ain't even shot it yet. <laughs> <laughs> So just take your rag and kind of clean all that up. Uh, all right, we'll do that, and then we'll show you what it looks like putting them back together in just a minute. All right, we're going to show you. It was packed with cosmoline in here, and we cleaned it out. We just want to show you. Make sure before you assemble it and get ready to shoot and everything that you get all. That's how much you can see the color of the paper towel we used to get all that out, and just to make sure it's nice and clean before we get ready to use it. And, that's what it looks like down in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as I demonstrated, you know, you just pull the little e clip off and it, you know, clears it. Basically, it's a little lock clip, is what it is. Um, probably should have did this before we even put it on there, but it doesn't matter either way, you know. But primarily, pri primarily you'll want to do it before you assemble it. Make sure everything's good and clean in there. But uh, just uh, didn't do it, but we made sure we did it before we shot it. And that just fits right in there like that. Then you got your little lock ring right here. Let's run the rag over it as well. And it just screws back on there. Then what you'll do is you'll take and line the little cutouts in it if you can see them. And then just pull this thing right here on back around. You'll probably have to use your little screwdriver to assist you. Just be careful not to scratch it. Then just make sure it pushes back down inside the little slot like that. Yep, yeah, there it is. And that's good to go. That should be it. 
All right, we'll put it back on the the lower and everything, and we'll show you the end result here in just a second. All right, we're just now putting the lower back on and putting the pins back on, and that's the end result of what it looks like. And what do you think about that? It definitely adds a whole lot of meat onto the end, and it's a whole lot heavier than the muzzle brake that was on it before, but the reason we did this is so that the flash would be minimized and that all the concussion or percussion, all the blast would be directed forward and not back toward you or to the sides. So we'll uh, shoot that later, but as far as Scotty goes, how, how, how'd the installation go? It went pretty easy. It wasn't really a lot to it. Uh, you know. Uh... You can get into a little bit of work with it if you want to, you know, line everything up and good and straight as far as your, you know, your, um, where your wrench goes to torque it down. But in this particular case right here, you know, uh, that's all hidden anyway. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, a lot of people are really particular, you know, which is no big deal. And what you'd do in a case like that, if you did want to do that with this particular setup right here, you would just back the uh, adapter out a little bit, take your Allen wrenches and, you know, tighten the Allen screws down, which would lock it, and then screw this down on there. Uh, until you got it where you wanted it. In this particular case right here, we just screwed it all the way down on there and until we ran out of travel and did the same thing with the uh, with the uh, suppressor as well. And you know, you can't tell you know, about those uh, where the wrench fits on there. I don't know the technical term of that right now, <laughs> but I think everybody understands what we're saying. Yeah, those, uh, little, those little indentations on right, the sides exactly, where you... you know, because people are really particular about things and uh, you know, some people uh, Want all that stuff straight, and I don't blame them. But uh, and that and those indentations on the side is where your 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 um, where you, where your wrench gets the right. grip. Exactly, exactly. Like like a, a nut or something. You know, when you put your wrench on there, um, and they're not all by much anyway. You can't really tell it. You know, besides that, it's hit by this forearm. Uh, and this is not a stock. No, it is not. It is a Sig brace. Exactly, it's the brace. So this is a pistol version. You know, so. They're all legal. That's right. <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much, Scotty. I hope that helps everybody. It shows how you take one off and put one back on. And before you do anything like this, make sure you check all your local, state, and federal laws. Make sure you're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing and any alterations you shouldn't be doing. Exactly. That's exactly right. Keep that politics straight. All right, well, thank you very much, Scotty. Thank you.